Snaggletooth sharks, also known as the weasel sharks, which are distinguished today by their rounded snouts and very long gills, are also notable for their mouths, where they contain a good number of strongly hooked, cusp-like and serrated teeth, which protrude and said mouths are closed. While the genus that they belong to, Hemopristus, is today only represented by this living species, Hemopristus elongata, there were once others, the most notable being Hemopristus cera, otherwise known colloquially as the wolverine shark, which comes from them being a good deal larger than their living relative, and wolverines, which are of course a good deal larger than weasels, ties into this notion. Described interestingly enough, before their living relative in 1843, the living weasel sharks being described in 1871 from their teeth, a skeleton of the former was found in 2014 up in Maryland, being around 15 million years in age, placing them in the Miocene epoch. With over 80 vertebrae being found, this lies up to the shark's skull, something very rare considering their fragile cartilaginous skeletons, which don't fossilise too well. The shark was determined to be around 6 to 7 metres long, bigger than the largest recorded great whites, and three times bigger than their living relative, meaning that they would have been very impressive animals when they were alive themselves being the largest known Kakariniform, or ground shark. This allowed them to be quite the fearsome predators, certainly against other fish and marine mammals, and this ties them into Megalodon in quite the interesting way. Megalodon pups were apparently born in size, which are today recognised as shallow water coastal nurseries, where they would have spent their first years of life. Newborn Megalodon were already large animals, at about 2 metres in length, but even so, this was definitely among the size range of prey that Hemopristus could have targeted, Hemopristus' presence in these areas have been confirmed through their teeth being present, alongside other large sharks like the Great Hammerhead, which meant that baby Megalodon, before becoming among the largest carnivores ever, had to contend with some pretty formidable predators before they themselves could be dominant. When catching an animal like a baby Megalodon, or any other such animal, Hemopristus' teeth were very well designed for such tasks, having interestingly slimmer pointed teeth in their lower jaw, while having broader, more triangular ones in the upper jaw. This arrangement allows for the lower teeth to function as piercing tools to hold prey in place, while the upper teeth then saw through with their broader serrations, allowing them to remove and eat big chunks of flesh very effectively. The teeth were considered so different from each other that it was once thought that the respective top and lower teeth belonged to two different animals, though this was later rectified when more complete jaw sets were found. The extinct wolverine shark also differs from the living weasel shark, dentition-wise, in having less numerous serrations of the upper teeth in that of the modern species. While surviving for a good length of time, even past that of Megalodon themselves, these sharks eventually became extinct around a million years ago. Last being found around the Gulf of Mexico, their disappearance likely being down predominantly to the cooling global temperatures that were occurring around the time. Either way, despite their extinction, the wolverine sharks were very interesting animals, and ones in the present day are sorely missed for how awesome it would have been to see them in action. All in all, I thank you for watching this video on these animals and that you may have learned something new. If you would like to see more from this channel, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And with that, I'll see you for the next instalments of this year's Shark Week.